Like, had you called me, yeah. I would have been there. I felt like you were the only one who would have the capacity to carry me through that situation. I remember walk. feeling a kind of way because you guys knew about the rumor, but you hadn't said anything mm. to me. I'm like, I don't think we're friends like that anymore. Maybe my brain is just mad slow, but I feel like she's proper accepted that, you know what I mean, like that we're not. But I remember like calling you, I think I was in Woolwich at the bus stop and I was like, Becky, I just took some pills. I just, I'm trying to like kill myself and blah, blah, blah. And you were like, you did what? We could have a conversation about it, but I didn't mm -hmm. think you'd get to that point where Do you it was. feel like the breakup was necessary? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Definitely. The, the way people were just like gravitating to was like what you were making. And it was so weird because I was like, this is my best friend. Like I, I don't want this emotion. I've never experienced this. I feel like my parents always wanted me to speak, mm -hmm. but I don't think I was ever like heard, if that makes sense. Calling you was like a big thing because like there were times where I'd call you and you wouldn't call back or I'd text you, you don't text back. You know what, I would just would not do this to you without saying something to you. I just would never end things, end our relationship without it, there being some sort of conversation. Like, what is it that I've done to you that was so bad for I me? called Tommy and I was like, oh, she's my soulmate. That's literally what I said after that. If I never told you until like the other day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, wow. That, okay, wow, that was, <laughs> hey, it's getting hot in here, oh my God. Welcome back to the, whoa, well, is it welcome back? Is it really welcome back? This is the new format. This is the first episode of the show in this way. This is my first time doing an introduction when I'm talking to you directly in this way and it feels amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you, like I, I just, I'm like, I feel, I feel like myself. I feel, I just feel really good. And I'm, and I'm so excited for this conversation I'm about to have today. I'm excited for this year and what this new season, this new, period of the show is about to bring for us, for me, for you, for just for all of us. Um, I, if you haven't watched the interlude episode, I want you to, I want to encourage you to watch that just because if you are someone who's watched the show before and you're not really understanding like why I'm doing things in this way, that interlude might give you a better, way better insight as to what's going to be happening in this year, how we're moving, how we're navigating and the intention, the, the intention behind this show, the meaning, the message and, and you know, the mission that I'm on. Um, but yeah, that aside, episode one, let's go, baby. Woo -hoo! Thank you, thank you, everybody, thank you, everybody. Um, on today's episode, I, I'm, I'm having a real one. I'm having, I wanted the first episode to be something that I really care about, something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm a lover girl, like I, I love my friends hard, I love my people hard. And I think as a woman, one, one thing that we struggle with and we, we find really hard to navigate is friendship breakups and it happens to all of us. And you know, as women, you know we're emotional and I'm a very emotional babe that if I love my friend, especially someone I consider my best friend, when we have, if, if, there's a, if a breakup happens, it feels like a part of me is being ripped away because we're, we're that close, you know, our relationship was that intense. Um, and I know that when it comes to women, one of the core things when it comes to friendship breakup is the lack of, you know, the, the inability to have uncomfortable conversations. So today I am going to be having a very real conversation with my ex best friend from when we were in year seven, as in this is, this is a girl that I met. The first day I met her, it was like, this is my girl for life. And we had a pretty big breakup that was really hard to navigate for both of us separately. And we've come to such a great point in our journey now that we can have this healthy conversation and, you know, love each other and like know how to move forward with our relationship. Um, but before doing so, these conversations matter. So grab, grab, grab a cup of tea, grab some drink, grab something because it's gonna be a very insightful one. It's gonna be a one that, you know, helps so many people who are trying to figure out how to have a conversation that can help them move forward with things. And, you know, honestly, like real, like being really real with you, there's some relationships in this life that are worth fighting for. And if they are, let's talk about it. And that's what today's about. So without further ado, please welcome Rebecca Tembo into the building. <laughs> Hi, baby. How are you? Hi, babe. I'm good. Screaming. Let's not ask as if you haven't been here <laughs> this whole time. I've been talking this whole time. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you feeling about our chatty chat chat? I'm excited. Yeah. So I did want to say, by the way, before we even start talking about anything. So I'm actually wearing, you can see this delicious pink <laughs> jumpsuit that I'm wearing right now. Let me give you like a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a twirl, but this is actually a Rebecca Sembo designed piece, made piece. Um, Becky is a fashion designer. She has been 
an incredible creator from when we were very young. Like she's been sketching from as far as I can remember with them little weird, ugly faces. Yes. In that book, <laughs> in that crazy book. Um, so yeah, I just wanted, you know, get the people to see what we're wearing. Come, let's Thank stand up you. and give them a little. She's wearing her piece. Made this in a day. <laughs> Period. And then this is my piece. Very gorgeous. Make sure you, I mean, we'll be, by the time we, by the, by the end of this conversation, you'll understand Bex and then you'll be able to <laughs> check out her page and, you know, understand her cast a little bit more. But you are, you're incredible. And it feels, I feel like this is, this is like the first time in how long that I've worn like a, a piece <laughs> from you. It's been, it's been a minute. It is, yeah. It's been a long time. But, um, okay. Let me grab myself together. <laughs> so before we even get into the core of this conversation, I was like, I just want to start off a little bit light and just... Give people, I'm gonna, we're gonna play a game called This or That, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like you get the gist, this or that, first round. Okay. And we can discuss this just a little bit. Plumstead Manor or Christ the King? For context, so basically Plumstead Manor is the secondary school that we went to, and then Christ the King is the college that yeah. we went to for, for like one year. a year. And then we were like, no, F this, we're out. <laughs> but, okay, so Plumstead Manor or Christ the King, and why? For you. That's a hard one. I'm, it, that's so easy for me. You know what I'm gonna say? Gonna say. Christ, no. Christ the King. No, I'm gonna say Plumstead Manor, but I didn't know. Oh, okay, 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 Becky, okay. I was, I hated. I thought you were gonna say because it was just one nah. year. No, 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 no. Plumstead Manor, Plumstead Manor was a dream. I think those amazing memories. Like the best, yeah. the best memories for us. Like we did so much together. Thinking back yeah. in school, like Plumstead Manor was just a vibe. Okay, number two, cooking or eating out? Eating out. You should know this. I know. I do know this, to be <laughs> fair. But I thought you might be like, um, you know, sometimes if I need to make, like, I don't know, salad. My best dish is salmon and potatoes. Do you remember salad that potato? Or something like that. That's in the group chat. Yeah. No, no, the salmon. And it... Becky, basically, <laughs> Becky is, like, a cook. Not I am a cook. A cook. She's, look, she's just a... Cooking's not a vibe <laughs> for her. But I think mine would be... What do you think mine would be? Um, definitely cooking because every time you go out, you're like, oh, it doesn't taste see, like. It no, I can't like. You know, I don't know I've, what they did in the kitchen. Not, yeah, no. See, this mm. is the thing. This is the problem I have now. I don't like cooking anymore. Really? Yeah. Like I really, I used to love it. Remember, I used to love it. I used to love cooking so well, not love it, but it used to be fun. Like I used to kind of find it enjoyable. But now you I'm introduced just like, me to F4. Right. F4. 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 Rule. Nice. Jollof rice. All yeah. the remember my jollof rice. Very spicy. But very good. Very the very best jollof rice. Yeah. Very spicy, but the best jollof rice. <laughs> okay, number three. Forgiving or forgetting in mm. relationships? I think the best thing to do is to forgive. But some, I think for me, naturally, my instinct's always been to just be like, whatever, just... What, I forget? Think, actually, no, I think I do both because I don't, I can't hold, I like, I feel like anger. it depends what day you're in. It depends what day. No, but in general, I wouldn't want to, like, hold anger because mm. that's very heavy mm. to, like, live every day. People are living their lives and you're just there, like angry. Do you know where? Yeah. I, do you know where I got that from? It was actually, and I thought you were gonna get it. The hills. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna forgive you, but I'm gonna forget you. Yeah. Shout out to Lauren. Okay. Well, I just kind of wanted the people to just get a gist, a little bit of a gist of and understand like how far back we go. Mm -hmm. But I think in order to do that, I want to give them more of a a thorough outlook on our relationship a little bit and kind of talk about some of our core memories. So I want to ask you, when I did ask you to have this conversation with me and I was like, you know what, I really want this episode or this conversation to be like the first thing that, do you know what, I want to take my heels off, I can't lie. I need to be comfortable, <laughs> sorry. I feel like this is, I can already like sense just uh, where we're about to go with this conversation that I'm like, I just need myself, I need to be comfortable. So I'm just going to put my slippers on. But yeah, when I did ask you, like, you know, I'm going to, yeah, I want this to be like the first episode and I want to have this conversation with you. Like, how did you feel? Like, were you, were you taken aback? Like, were you keen to do it? How did you feel? I felt fine. Obviously, the way you call people, like, I have something to tell you. <laughs> it's it's going to be really good. Like, you are so dramatic with the way you like to introduce something. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, I felt like I knew what you were going to say. Just, I don't know why, but, you know, inklings, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And... But I understand um, how it could help somebody mm. um, or a group of women or girls that mm. are probably going through some sort of similar situation or whatever. And I remember listening to like an episode on somebody's podcast yeah. and it mentioned like a similar concept, but it didn't go like far deep into it. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, you know, it's probably a necessary conversation to have to help people Why? especially as well. Why did you feel like that one didn't go far deep into it? What was it about that conversation for you? No, I think it just was like a little Lose. section within a conversation, oh, if that makes not sense. Like it wasn't specifically about 
forgiveness, yeah, friendships yeah, yeah. and all of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk back to when we were first in, you know, year seven and like that was the first. What, well, was that the first time we really met? Because we have this story where we're like in the park. Back in the day, in the park. Da, da, da. <laughs> but, so, but I never really understood that story because I'm like, did that actually happen? Did we actually meet in the park? We didn't like and meet, then, but we were there. We, we were, were okay, there. So in essence, <laughs> there was a park. <laughs> and then we saw each other in the park, and mm -hmm. then I think maybe a few weeks later, there was like the first day of year seven. Maybe even like two years later. I don't even I know. Don't know. No, no, but like, sometime like later. A few months later, yeah. Sometime later, yeah. it was the first day of year seven, and we. Yeah, we were like, was it a circle? Like we were in some sort of circle. Yeah, in or the, some sort. What do you call it? The assembly, big rooms, assembly hall. Yeah, it was like the first day. Something. Well, I want to know what was your first impression of me when we first, when we first met, and I'll tell you my first impression of you if I even remember it. <laughs> um. It was a good impression. I don't know if I had like a thought per se, yeah. but she basically just came into the, the circle. <laughs> I don't know if you called yourself Wumi or if you called yourself. No, it was definitely, that, that, by that point, it was definitely Wumi, <laughs> for sure. I'm Wumi, I'm from America. <laughs> I'm from Chicago. For some reason, I had this, I don't know what it, they, I mean. It kind of makes sense. Now. It makes sense now, but essentially my parents um, live, well, my mum lives in America. Mm -hmm. I'm not American, but for some reason, I just used to go around talking about, I'm from Chicago. Like and that is American. just, I'm not. It's like, why, why was I saying that? Oh, yeah. This little weirdo, terrorist, little seven year, seven year old child. Um, but yeah, that was like one of the first like engagements that, that we had. That was literally the first. That was the, I literally was like, hi, I'm Wimmy. Yeah. Da, da, da. And I think we naturally kind of gravitated towards each other. We were in kind of quite a big group. There was a lot yeah. of us. We were a very, very loud bunch. <laughs> we were very out there, always dancing. Loud. Yes, he was. Oh. We were all very much, <laughs> you know, I saw a video the other day of like, I think Mandy had posted it like from time ago when I was like just searching for like old things. You were there dancing with us jerking so don't even yeah i was doing this stuff we were, we, were all, <laughs> we were all about it but yeah we had a we had a really really amazing like year seven mm -hmm. just secondary school period anyway and i think in terms of first impression i don't actually i feel like i don't know i feel like you were, were you quite quiet a little bit i feel like i've always been quiet not like too quiet like i don't speak but like, yeah I just you just kind of like, like we just like just I kept know. yourself to yourself yeah. a little bit but we i feel like we just at some point i don't really know when it happened but i think it was from that point in year seven where we kind of gravitated I think we each other. always close from the beginning. Yeah. But then I also like had this other sort of group, not group, like a very mini trio of like Delisha and Lisa. Mm, really? Like right in the, oh, beginning, in the beginning, like we used to go and like yeah, yeah, yeah. But that lasted, and like that, that lasted for like, what, like two years? If that. No, maybe like a year or so. But it never like went away. It kind of just all merged yeah, together. Like one. That was literally the beginning of secondary school. Yeah. So we're all like getting to know each other and stuff. And like in that time of us just even growing, like I think there were so many things that we did together from whether it was, we just were very, Hostiles, from that age, man. we just really cared about money and success and empowerment and getting to the top of whatever we were going after at that point, which was like just, what were we even searching for? I think that was our biggest thing. Like we just had this desire to be something. I think there was like a deep passion mm. at that age for just, success not even necessarily success just for particularly like what we wanted to do whether mm. it was in fashion or whether it was presenting or, or music entertainment or music um or you know wholesaling if you want to yeah. call it that i think we had that passion which i think is very good because yeah. as you get older it can turn into more like being like financially driven yeah. versus passion, passion driven but we've always kind of led with passion i was just thinking about um some of our core memories and i think when I think about core memories, just things that made me, when I look at our relationship, like m one of the more defining moments for me, if you mm -hmm. remember, and I want to know what yours is, but mine was when we were, I don't know what year we were in, maybe it was year 10, maybe it was year 11, you can correct me, but it was the day I like called you. And I, I think you, out of everybody anyway, you were the only person in my life at that point that kind of knew the core of like what was, I think we were just, we were that for each other. Like we, mm -hmm. I knew the core of what was going on in your home. You knew more, a little bit more of the core of like what was going on in my home. I think I kind of kept that quite like mm -hmm. isolated like to myself. Um, but I remember like calling you, I think I was in Woolwich at the bus stop and I was like, Becky, I just took some pills. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm trying to like kill myself and blah, blah, blah. And you were like, you did what? And obviously like you came and then we went, we ended up going to the hospital together for how many hours, we stayed in that Four hospital. Four five hours. We were there till the morning. I don't know if we were in secondary school or if we were in, I feel like we were in like the last year of secondary school because we didn't end up going to school the, that day. But you stayed with me the whole night essentially. And it was, I think on that day I was like, okay. That is whenever I think about our relationship, that is like one moment that always comes to mind. Cause I'm always just like, wow, like you, you came immediately in it. Like, and I think that was very out of character for me, especially at that point where like, I never really used to talk about, I don't know if you remember, like I didn't really use to talk yeah. about anything emotional. Like I just was always like, ah, I'm losing my 
mm-hmm. dancing. Da, da, da. That when I called, I literally I remember it. So, I remember it so well, just like sitting down like, by the bus stop, and I was like, Becky, I don't know what I've just done, but oh my god, like da 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 da. And that being like for me, I always think about that. Whenever I think about our dynamic, that is one moment that I always think about. I'm like, wow, that's that's my girl. What was like? What is your core memory when you think about our relationship? I feel like it's just like a mixture of things and I say this because my memory is not great I'm not gonna lie to you Mm. and I remember a lot of things I do Mm. but I feel like I've always kind of I don't struggle to be like love you like I can do all of that stuff right you're not the affectionate babes no I am actually very affectionate you're affectionate when you're like completely comfortable yeah yes that that is true that is true that's true but I don't know why, but sometimes I can be like hesitant to show my, it's, it's not like a um, something that I think about, if that yeah. makes sense. It's just yeah. like how I am. Yeah. Um, so I feel like for me, oh, it was hey, more hello. like- I'm gonna break the dress that you made me, God forbid. Wow, sorry, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> it was more like, there'll be little things yeah. here and there. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh my God, like, I love her. Like, that's, do you mean like- mm. But I wanna know what the, what the, what the I wanna know what- So, we just did so many things, like whether it was like the sh- when we were pretending to be on the show and here we are today, yeah. um, or I remember stuff like when we went to, um, what was Delisha's birthday? Where did you go there? Did you go? Which one? I saw some video the other day and I was like, I didn't go to that birthday. Did you go to that birthday? Um, Lisa's like one or something. The parties that we went to, even that time when I went to that party and I'm pretty sure it was definitely spiked because the fortune teller told oh me my God. actually spiked, she told me. Yeah. And even at that time, our relationship wasn't even like that strong, mm. but you were like there to take me, like in the ambulance, take yeah. me home and stuff like that. Um, very dramatic. We've had very dramatic <laughs> we've had a lot of very dramatic moments very but I feel like it was just it wasn't like anything grand or mm-hmm. be more in like the conversations that we would have mm-hmm. even when we were like young and like we didn't have well, maybe we had maybe, I don't know maybe we didn't have credit yeah. and we'll be like on the house phone for like hours oh actually that's gosh. probably oh my god a I good... feel like I still remember your house number from then you probably I don't I've, know I <laughs> feel like I still kind we of 0208 that's yeah. what I know <laughs> but I yeah like that and if I think about when we went to Milky Town if we want to tell people oh about my god. oh my god <laughs> Milky Town days trauma and we really like took that bullying together no like abuse <laughs> like literal no abuse, abuse together um what would you say was a core cool memory that solidified our relationship for you? Whenever we made up that handshake. Do you still remember our handshake? Oh my God, yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, you do, because we did it oh, last day. Yeah, we did, did we? it in your house, did? yes. We oh, are shit, that's so... okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we are so cool. And people be like, you lot are so lame. Get rid yeah. of that shit Whenever right we now. did that handshake, which was, I feel people like that was like, like you are so lame. year nine, but I yeah. feel like that, if, even prior to that, I would have felt something, but because it was just so long ago, I can't remember specific moments, mm. but I remember that handshake being like a very, and I feel like because it was very us, yeah. and everyone just look at us and be like, what are these girls like doing? But yeah. they just didn't get it. Yeah, and we, well, we got, got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like we always did it in moments where it just was necessary. Yeah. Whenever we felt like we said something mad, we were like, oh, yeah. we are so cool. Like we don't need anyone. Yeah. Obviously there were moments that you feel like you express that moment when we went to the hospital. And I've had moments like that where you'd come to my house and yeah. then, you know, whatever. There were those moments, but I feel like, not that someone else would be there too, mm-hmm. but you can only be there because of those other like smaller things. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? I think so. Try and break that down for me, because I, I, just in case, I don't feel like I completely <laughs> get it, but go on. No, like, because of all those little moments that we had, yeah. handshake yeah. or kiki or on the phone for hours or yeah. writing our songs together or going to O2 to do a photo shoot of this group Go-go. that we had and stuff. <laughs> because of those moments, it makes those down times easier to like call and be like, I need your help or yeah. something like that too. Yeah, no, I get you, yeah. I get you. You know what, What um, one thing I actually remember that for me solidified how I felt about you. And I think we spoke about this once and you were like, wow, like, thank you for telling me that. Um, oh yeah, that too. Yeah, like I feel like that was a really big one. Because I called Tommy and I was like, oh, she's my soulmate. That's literally what I said after that. If I never told you until like the other day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, wow. No, no. That, okay, wow. That was, <laughs> hey, it's getting hot in here. Oh my God. Okay, so um, I'm just going to explain this just so they know what we're talking about. Essentially, I think I... Um, so from a very young age, like Becky's always been very creatively gifted. Like you, like I said, th- those sketches, terrible faces for sure. Faces were ugly as fuck. However, be great. the drawings, you know, the fashion that the girl was putting together were amazing. <laughs> like it was, it was really amazing. Um, but 
as she like you put yourself out there like quite early on and like she was showing her designs and like people were buying it and it was it was gaining a lot of traction it was amazing i think at this point we were only what like 18 19 yeah. years old and i remember like, just feeling just away about it like i i and i and i'm just someone who i just i've never felt this emotion before like genuinely i remember thinking what the fuck is this essentially i really felt really jealous mm. of it of like the success that she was gaining and like the traction that people were you know the, the way people were just like gravitating to was like what you were making and it was so weird because i was like this is my best friend like i i don't want this emotion i've never experienced this like i, I love this girl like what is this and i want to say that was the and i remember feeling like the only thing i could do was prayer like pray and at that point i didn't have like a solidified relationship with god um like I believed in God for sure, but I wasn't like this in the way that I am now, in the way that I feel about God now, it wasn't, it just wasn't as intense. Mm. And I remember just going to pray like every day, just praying like, God, I love this girl. This is my best friend. This is my sister. Um, how, why do I feel these emotions of jealousy? Like, I don't want to feel this. And I remember praying it every single day for like two weeks continuously, just cause I was like, what is this? And it just went. And I was like, oh my God, God is real. I was like, oh my God, God must be real because I don't feel this anymore. Like, yeah. and, I, and I was so happy about that. And for me, I was just like, wow, like number one, like, you know, yes, the, the, the understanding that God is real, but also to know that I didn't, that I didn't want to hold on to that emotion. Like for me, it wasn't a matter of like, oh yeah, you know, like, ugh, like fuck that bitch. That's like, because with, that's not your character. You know what I mean? It's just... It's just emotions. Unnecessary, yeah. unnecessary. But yeah, for me, I think that's what like really solidified like how I saw like our friendship and how I saw you. Cause I was like, yeah, like this isn't a relationship that, you know, I want to like harbor any like negative emotion to us. Um, but yeah, so all those good things, amazing things that we feel or felt about each other aside, I want to go and kind of start deconstructing what led to our breakup. Cause I think it was quite an intense, weird. It was so weird, like thinking about it. Like it was so weird. Cause it felt like there were so many things that were happening like slowly it felt like there was like small like little issues that weren't really being dealt with and I think this happens in a lot of female relationships where you have like little issues but then it you just kind of passively like move past them you don't address them and then it builds up it builds up and then it kind of explodes in the way that it did for us would you say like I'm correct in saying so that it kind of was like a lot of small things that we yeah. just small things but I wouldn't say it exploded it just fizzled because explode would like kind of imply that there was like a big argument. Yeah, or something we, like. okay, we didn't we didn't have a big argument at all. It was like a literally it was very, But I feel like it, the reason I use the word exploded, I don't think exploded in the sense of like there was like a massive argument between us. But in terms of how we, it was it literally was like a complete. There was no yeah. conversation. Yeah. And so for me, that was that's still like an explosion. Yeah, because yeah it's, I get what you mean. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to kind of construct if I can get the English right, <laughs> deconstruct some of the the, the events that kind of led to the breakup. Mm -hmm. Um. What for you, before I get into mine, what for you were some of the, or what can you remember or recall as like, ooh, this is maybe like the first sign of this relationship isn't mm. moving in the direction that it was moving before? Or do you want me to go? Definitely after like college and all that stuff. Cause even like first year of fashion school for me, which would have been like first year when you were like BA. Mm -hmm. Mad, cause like, that's the first thing I wrote down. You know? Really? The, yeah, I feel like college. that's, yeah. I, 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 what, did you feel in college? Yeah, I felt oh, in okay. college. What did, wait, what did, college. You, what did you feel at? I said after college. After college. Yeah, I didn't feel it in college. I felt it like a tiny bit in college. I think okay. it was like midway through college where I what, was CTK like- CTK or- Yeah, 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 CTK, okay. no, no, CTK. Where I was mm. like, I was like, is there something going on here? And I was trying to like put the, the time, I was trying to put everything together because when I was doing this conversation where I was like, wait, remember that time? So recently you, you told me that you, there was a conversation that we had in the car. And I think I expressed to you that like, is our relationship changing? That and was then you after were like, college. That was after college. Okay, so I yeah. think that was at the point that I Yeah, saw that was it. definitely maybe I don't know if you I don't think maybe you were in uni. Because mm. I didn't go to uni. So maybe you were in uni at that mm. time. What did you but, feel? What was going on? Like what did, what were you feeling when you when you bring up that after college point? After college, but like I feel like it was maybe not even the first year of fashion school. Yeah. I think it would have been like going into the second year. Yeah. But I know that I was going through like my mental health stuff for the first time, like in so much like, yeah. um, I was gonna say stress. It was just agonizing, if yeah. that makes sense. And I didn't know like how to handle my emotions, how to deal with it. So I, I know I was definitely like more to myself, mm -hmm. but also everybody was like on ends. Mm -hmm. And I was like going into Central London every day. Like it was just, there was obviously naturally, there was just a bit different, like what mm -hmm. we were all doing. But now that I'm saying that, actually, I think it was before that. Before college, before uni. Not uni, but uni for me. Yeah, yeah, now that I've said that, that yeah. moment when, I don't want to mention people's names, um, unless it's necessary, but, um, 
when I did that YMCA, I told you about when yeah. I did the YMCA yeah. um, fashion show thing. Yeah. And I remember that moment. Yeah, there was just a dumb rumor that was a lie going around. And um, I, at the end of the show, it was literally just me going to the bus stop by myself. And then you guys went in the opposite. Although you did say, like, do you want to come with us? But then I wasn't going to go with people that. Can I swear? Do you chat uh, shit about me? I don't know, because you know me. Like, mm. but, um, <laughs> Can I swear? No. I don't know. Yeah, but carry on, babe. Yeah, so I feel like that, but I don't know. I can't remember what age. I feel like that was we me. Were, that was, we that were was, really, that was, that was still secondary. That was, hmm? was, sec was that oh, college? Was that was secondary school. The riots. So maybe we've riots. been having problems in secondary school and we've just not even been knowing that it's been there. I, I mean, remember we'll, feeling a kind of way because you guys knew about the rumour, but you hadn't said anything mm. to me. Mm -hmm. And then to hear like the other people in that big friendship group, because yeah. obviously where we were from, yeah. being in Greenwich, like Greenwich, Bexley, like all of them areas, yeah. You know how we all merged together. Mm -hmm. For them to be saying stuff and I'm like, huh? And then it's like, you guys knew mm -hmm. and no one told me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it was a lie mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. Do you well. know what, I can't lie. Like I, firstly, we don't need to discuss it because I actually don't know what the rumor was or what rumor we're talking about. Cause I feel like back then there was, you know, but if it's what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. Um, I did actually want to talk about this today because I was thinking like, when, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out how to best navigate this because obviously when we find, when things went AWOL, when things went completely left and Tommy, Tommy being one of the girls that we, Tommy being one of our sisters, like Tommy's our girl, she's part of this big, not big, but small friendship group that we had and told me your reasons as to why you were, I always kind of felt like you were weird with me or like cold with me. Like I always felt like in our friendship dynamic, I always got the cold shoulder and I always found it really weird. Like I'll be like, how the fuck am I the one getting the cold shoulder where I kind of felt like I was always the one who was trying the hardest like with our relationship. Um, but when Tommy told me that, oh, like maybe some stuff in the past and things that were going on there, we'll get into it a little bit more, but I, I remember just sitting down with myself, like making a list or just thinking about all the things that could have like gone on in the past. And really and truly, like one of the core things that I did have on there was like, did she not feel like when rumors were spreading, did she not feel like I had her back enough? Because like, I would love to, like, I would really love to know. And I think you've kind of stated that here, like where you kind of feel like I didn't maybe approach it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously I'm not gonna hold you to something or however many things <laughs> at that age because yeah. we were like so young and mm -hmm. I can understand obviously when we had a conversation I could understand even before that I could understand like why maybe you didn't say something in the moment or or have a conversation about something yeah. or whatever it is but obviously at that age yeah you're gonna be like when you're a teenager like you're like even now being 25 I feel so young yeah. being 25 yet alone being 15 and not feeling like I had anyone that was like really there for me, like should something like happen. Mm. Um, and I, but I didn't feel like that all the whole way, that that yeah. only probably came through like, like maybe even year 10. Now, Cause now that we're speaking, I'm actually now starting to mm -hmm. remember things. Mm -hmm. um, but that didn't come until like later on. I guess with me, I was thinking just back then, like I was like, I always felt like we were close and I always felt like I, one thing I really felt like we didn't speak a lot about was just, how do I want to go at this? I guess what I want to know is just from what you're saying, when you, if you could think back to then, how did you want that conversation to have happened? Or like, how did you want me to like support you at that point? You know what I mean? Cause I think even thinking about it now, I just, I would really love to know, like I, where there was so much going on mm -hmm. and there were so many people and there were so many things. I think for me, my, my way of like dealing with when those rumors were spreading was like, I just never discussed anything. I just kind of always acted, like everything was good, you know what I mean? Like it would just be like, oh yeah, we're still going to chicken and chip shops or, oh, um, Rebecca, you come into my house. Do you know what I mean? Like I I never really knew how to navigate those discussions because I think for me it was more of a, like a matter of, I don't want to make her feel uncomfortable. So I'm just not going to bring it up or like talk about it. And I felt like, and, and a, lot, a lot, you know what, thinking about it now, I think back then I always felt like there was, especially when it came to like sexual conversation, I feel like we never, we never, we didn't really have them as much like I feel like there was like other people that you ha like that th those conversations were happening with outside of me I don't know if this is like yeah I don't know how you yeah. felt about that or if you remember in that way I don't really think so to be honest with you yeah um personally but I would say it's just like if you hear something like I guess for me like if yeah. I heard something about you I would just say like I don't I don't feel like it was a, I don't know I mean I 
maybe I just need to know the specific of like the actual story that we're talking about here. But mm -hmm. I don't, obviously it wasn't like you were the one Spreading saying it, do you I mean? But yeah. it was just more about like having a heads up. And I'm mm. like, especially, I remember like that YMCA show, YMCA show mm -hmm. that was in summertime. So obviously if you feel like that, you're just gonna be at home. Like, you know, when you're young, you don't have no car, you don't have mm. like money like that. Where are you going? Mm. Or I do it, remember that summer you weren't, you weren't really out. Yeah, because I don't wanna be around people that are obviously gonna say things about me. Mm. Um, it just, I just, but you know me, I've never been like, like I was always in this group, mm -hmm. but, if I don't, if I if I feel uncomfortable, I'm not gonna go there. Yeah, and that's just how I've always been. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel uncomfortable until that day when I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, these lot are crazy. Not you guys, like the the others. Mm -hmm. Like that was when I was like, okay, cool. This is I don't want to be in that sort of group because especially because we were so young, people naturally are gonna hear something and they're just gonna go and like spread it without actually thinking about is this true? Should I have a conversation with her? Although it's not their business. Yeah. Um, and just being smart in the way they navigate things. Mm. Obviously, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would respond a lot differently to it today. Mm. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't even a big like situation. It was just one of the ones that you remember. Yeah. Um, when we when we did speak not too long ago, so we spoke in February early on, um, one of the things that you said to me was that, remember that car conversation that you said we had had? Like that kind of like sticks, comes to mind quite a lot because I, Number one, don't even remember that conversation, but why were you so convicted by like, the fact that we were already, the fact that we were moving apart from each other, your, when I addressed like, oh, I feel like where things are changing, blah, blah, maybe we should like do something about it. Mm -hmm. Why was your response so much more certain on like, no, we're fine. Like, we know that like the pastor said, we'll always be friends. Like, we'll, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why, was, why was that your response to that? I didn't say it like, I didn't say, no, we're fine. Mm. You said something like, you were worried yeah. about us. And I said, I said something like, I always knew that we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Like, or I always know that we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, because Pastor said, <laughs> but I also just didn't, I don't know. Like, it's just something quite innate. Mm. Maybe it's God, but I just felt like even if, well, up until the breakup anyways, even if um, something happened, mm. we'll be okay. Mm -hmm because our friendship was obviously like very, although it was like becoming a bit distant at that time, we were still like, it didn't matter, like we could be together and it still, in my opinion, mm -hmm. felt like I was still with the person that I grew up mm -hmm. with, if that made sense. Yeah. So I didn't feel, I felt like we'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. One of the other bigger points, or one of the other things I think maybe, especially for you, because I didn't realize until you said it to me, but when I was, when I moved out um, with Uche and I remember, I think I called you and I was like, this is, I just want to keep time so that you understand what I'm talking about. But basically earlier on in like 2021, was it 2021? 2021, end of, beginning of 2021, 2022, something like that. Maybe 2020. Um, I, no, it was 2021. I called Becky and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm having a bit of a panic attacky moment. like. I don't know what I'm doing in my life. Da, 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 da. Me being me, not really thinking about the state or where our relationship was, or not really, maybe not really caring where our relationship was, because I always felt like in that situation, especially like you're my person to go to for that kind of thing. Especially being like, I don't feel like I have those conversations a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That was like, oh my gosh, I'm really feeling like quite, like I'm having a lot of anxiety right now. Like, can you come and just let's have a conversation? Mm -hmm. I think when we spoke about this recently, you were obviously saying that because I felt something was off on that day. I think that was the first time I was like, oh my God. I was like, wow, this relationship is nowhere near what it used to be before. So from your eyes, like, how did you see it on that day? Yeah, when like we were I said, that I just didn't understand at that, at that time. Not that I didn't understand, I could understand because mm. of the history of the relationship that mm. I would obviously be able to like get what you were trying to say yeah. and what you were trying to figure out. But at the same time, I think there was like certain questions that you were asking me like, where do you think I could improve? I don't know, stuff like that, mm. that I was like, and even for me in that moment, I was like, I actually don't know because I'm not around you and I don't speak to you as mm. much. Mm. And I said to you, like, maybe someone that's like close or like is around you more would actually be able to give you the answer because I didn't want to like talk out of my ass. Mm. I don't want to be like, oh, you should do this and change your life and rah, 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 because that actually might not be helpful. Mm. Whereas someone that's actually around you a lot more could be like, but I guess, I guess for me, when you when we had the conversation the other day, what I was thinking about is like in that moment, because there was no other conversation before that where we were where we kind of had a definitive, oh yeah, 
you know, our friendship is changing, like we're moving on separate ways. Had you already concluded in that place, you know what, I'm actually comfortable with us not being where we, you know what I mean, considering how close we were, for you in your mind to be like, I'm actually not around you like that. Were you just comfortable in accepting that? Because when I recognised that, for me, my response was, I literally went to the kitchen. I remember you left and I went to the kitchen and I was like, wait, am I bugging out? Like we are, this relationship is just not that anymore. And I really, really felt a way about it. I remember the only person I ever spoke to about just our dynamic and like the shifts was Uche just because we lived together. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember just saying to her, like, I don't know if I'm over-exaggerating, but that felt really weird. Like that felt... Like, I'm like, I don't think we're friends like that anymore. Maybe my brain is just mad slow, but I feel like she's proper accepted that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that we're not. So in your mind, were you kind of kind of just accepting like, oh yeah, it's just not that anymore. And it, do you know what I mean? Like, cause we didn't have a conversation. I don't know if the acceptance came at that point. Mm. I can't, maybe I will like, be able to pin it yeah. at some point during this conversation. But um, I'll definitely say like, yeah, you'd, I think you maybe like fought harder for the relationship um, in the, sense of like louder if that made sense mm. like you're more vocal Definitely about it more vocal, yeah. but I feel like because I'm a bit more like chill and mm. I was just maybe like for me it could be like calling you was like a big thing because like there were times where I'd call you and you wouldn't call back or I'd text you you don't text back or something like that and I feel like at that point as well like because obviously we'd now gone into like doing like our career sorts of stuff mm. and I was um, meeting new people as well, especially after fashion school. Like I obviously now had this group from there too. And we were doing things, just like hanging out and like mm -hmm. doing things that I was like generally interested in. And we weren't doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously when we were young, like we went to all the parties, we did this, we did that, but we didn't, we haven't done anything. Well, not that we haven't, but like at that point we hadn't done anything that was who of like a reflection of who we were in terms of like hanging out together. Mm -hmm at that age, at that mm -hmm. point in our lives. So I also think there was just a lot of like, I don't want to say differences, but there maybe that is maybe yeah. that is the word, differences, yeah. Um, yeah, and for me, yeah, so my approach might have been a bit more subtle in the sense where I'm not like, like, ah, but mm. I'm not saying that's the right way either, but yeah, after some time, I was just like, well, she's not going to pick up or... And I think there was a day, I can't remember what it was. I think it, you, we might want to, I think it might be the graduation. Oh, yeah, that was obviously... Quite well, that's not the, the day I was thinking of. The, mm. I don't know, it was around a Christmas period anyways. Um, but this was like a few years ago. Was maybe nearer that time too. Mm -hmm. But I don't... I feel like I'd messaged you about something. I can't remember what it was specifically, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a reply. But that was just becoming like constant at that point as well. Where I wasn't replying. Yeah, and I don't think it was malicious or anything, but it's just like, I couldn't be bothered, like, if I'm being honest. And I think for me, and I said this to you when we like had a conversation too, when I'm now, I feel like in my relationship, I feel like I'm a, definitely like a better friend now. Mm -hmm. And I really value like being close with the people that I'm close to mm -hmm. because I'm not, like I might talk a lot on social media about certain things like career stuff or gym or whatever it is, but in general, as you know, like I'm very like to myself, I just do like my thing and everything. Mm -hmm. And for me to like go into like a friendship, I want to be close to the people that I'm really close to. Mm -hmm. And I felt like at that point we just weren't like clicking, mm -hmm. you know, and I just thought, hmm. But that wasn't like, a, that wasn't the point for me to be like, oh, like I give this up, is, it was just more like, yeah. okay. It looks like, you know. There was a two, I think there's two significant moments I kind of want to talk about because I think they led to this. Mm -hmm. um, one of my one, I think there was the, obviously I was graduating and I recall this really well, but I think at the time of my graduation, I felt, I, I really, really, really felt away towards you because I was like, I, number one, I didn't care about the graduation. My parents, like you being the only person, like I said earlier, like being the only person that kind of knew like the ins and outs, like especially like during the growing up stages, mm -hmm. that knew like, you know, what my home environment was like and then having my parents come to London and them staying in my house and how intense that could have been for me. Obviously I didn't tell, there was really no one that really knew, like even my newer friends at that point, like no mm -hmm. one really knew like the depth of it. And I felt like in our relationship, like you can correct me if I'm wrong here, I felt like I wasn't, I was a little bit more, yeah, whatever. Like, I wouldn't really talk. Like, I just was like, oh, whatever. Life is life. Like, whatever. And I felt like there was a lot of moments where I feel like naturally it was easier for me to just be like more a supportive friend and just kind of ride. And like, not to say that you didn't ride for me, but I felt like I definitely was more so 
just, you know me, like my, my, my nature is very much like, oh, movements and, you know, if you need me, like, let's roll, let's mm-hmm. do this, da 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 that I felt like that was the core moment where I felt like I really, really needed you mm-hmm. around without me having to kind of like say it mm-hmm. and that like you didn't have my back, not even have my back because it wasn't like I was, you know, fighting with anyone, but mm-hmm. like you didn't, you know, have me as kind of just a support system at that time and I really felt really alone at that time. And I remember t- saying to Tommy, because Tommy was messaging about me, messaging me about something at that time. I don't even know what the hell that baby was talking about. <laughs> and I remember just saying like, bro, this is, um, like, my life is going nuts right now and this baby isn't here. Why are you talking to me about this kind of thing? And I remember really feeling a way about it. And obviously at that time, so basically I didn't invite um, Rebecca to my graduation. It wasn't even that I didn't even invite her. It was like, I didn't even do my graduation planning. It was like, the parents are around haven't met met or seen my parents in all these years and then they want to be in London for my graduation come to my graduation celebrate it with me I'm like I'm not trying to plan all of this stuff Mm. and when like my other friends are like saying oh they were saying like oh yeah we're doing this graduation thing for you or whatever and I can't lie like I don't want to be sat here and lie and be like I didn't know that you weren't getting like you know what I mean like it, it didn't extend to you but at that point I think I was so angry over the fact that like I'm like in this bubble this thing by myself where I'm like I need my girl I need my girl um and you weren't there that I was just like you know what fuck it like whatever that I remember when I was I think it was the day that I was picking up my hat on the graduation day morning mm-hmm. if you remember we were on the phone I think you had called me really briefly and I remember just thinking wow like she's actually not going to be here today and I know that wasn't down to you and that was very much like a me decision but that was a very big moment for me I was like wow like this is as much as I hate this day and I really don't care about this day because all the things that were circulating around it you're really not going to be here like that was that was a, a moment for me and I know that that was something that I don't know we never really discussed that like how you felt about you know not being there and like kind of seeing everybody else there yeah well, to be honest, that's the first time you've told me that you knew that I wasn't going to be there. Because yeah. every time we've had the conversation, maybe twice we've had it, you've said that you didn't know. It was just like, I feel like, but like, even I, feel like so, I feel like subliminally in my head, it was like, I think it was Victoria who had, or somebody, I don't know who really was planning it, but I know that they were just inviting a bunch of people. I think I was even in the car with Bolu, just re- recollecting like the memory mm-hmm. and Bolu saying to me, oh, like there was a group chat. And I think she was like, Victoria made the group chat. And I was like, wait, who was on this group chat? Like what was kind of like the, cause I really wasn't really, I really, really didn't want to do anything for that day. Mm-hmm. And I think in that conversation, it wasn't even like, I don't think it was like an intentional, please don't invite Rebecca. Mm-hmm. But it was very much like a, if she doesn't come, like I don't care. Because for me, my anger overrides her being at my graduation that I personally don't care about. And on that day as well, like it was no, I just, I really just didn't care about that day that what mattered to me more that I actually cared about was like this moment, you know what I mean? That for me, it was like, I felt like you were the only one who would have the capacity to carry me through that situation. Cause I really felt like I was drowning. And like, for me, it's like, it's like, I'm, like I'm, I'm drowning, I'm like, whenever I think about the moments where I felt like you were drowning, like I kind of felt like I was always there to support you in that, you know what I mean? That I was like, this is, it really did, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but for me it was like, it felt like the fir- the, 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 the core time also in like our adult life when adult things were happening that I just didn't really feel like you had me. I feel like with the um, family situation yeah. regarding your parents, yeah. like I didn't, I don't feel like I knew that's how you felt about that situation. Yeah. Obviously, I knew they were coming into town or whatever, but yeah. like... But even with them coming into town, like, I, I don't even feel like I really heard from you at that point. But I, I can't remember, like, yeah. what I was thinking or what I was doing yeah. at that point. But I don't feel like I felt like, oh, you, you wanted me there or anything. Because it felt very like, oh, yeah, they're coming to town, da 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 Because you didn't... Like, the things that have happened to you with your family. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that I saw, mm-hmm. obviously when I when we were young. Yeah. But in terms of like finding out about like your biological parents and things like that, it didn't like I don't feel like I understood exactly how you felt. Yeah. In I don't so think much anyone detail. Did. Do you know what? I think no one did. But mm-hmm. I feel like I had this expectation for you too because of what yeah. you saw. And Do you I know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel like if it was like your the mum that had raised you here. Yeah that I would be able to like, understand because I was in the house yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, you I got it. Mm-hmm. But with like your biological parents and from what you told me, with them coming, I literally, I probably was thinking, oh, like, let them have their time. Yeah. Like, I wasn't even thinking, oh, she wants me to be there. And when we had that talk and I said to you, like, had you called me, yeah. I would have been there. And I feel like, I hear what you're saying in terms of like, you feel like you were, um, I guess, trying to say you are there for me more than I was there for you. And I don't think it's a situation of like, well, I did this and I did this. I'm not going to like count things. Yeah. But I feel like there's so much that I had also like done in our friendship, mm-hmm. whether that was like 
whatever like anything you need anytime you called me like I was always there mm -hmm. even that night when you had that situation yeah. like we were kids I don't even know how I left the house after midnight to go on the bus like mm -hmm. all the way to Woolwich or the times that we would have like these deep conversations or even if it's like having to lie to someone's parents about this this that like anything you needed I feel like I was always be like readily available yeah. and if I wasn't there it's because I didn't know that that was like what I needed what you needed and I don't think you're even a bad communicator but I feel like those situations were so um complicated complicated for you like for you to speak about it because yeah. you're always the like happy person and bubbly and, and things like yeah. that and I think that's why it just felt like, oh, like, oh, yes, yeah, the parents are coming. Like, you know, it just felt very normal yeah. that your parents were coming into town. I wouldn't and I think, have thought anything And when it. I think about it, like, sorry to cut you off, like, that, I think that is the biggest thing for me where I feel like for me throughout our childhood, like, that was the the thing. Like, that was the notion, like, oh, yeah, we're me, like, the happy, like, ah, da, 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 that it always kind of felt like whenever there was, like, something... Because there was a lot of stuff, like I think even till this day, there's when we probably off camera, but there was a lot of stuff that was definitely going on outside of what you saw, mm. do you know what I mean, that we haven't spoken about that I never really like touched mm. on. That coming to school was very much like a masking thing for me. Like I came to school to like as an escape. My school was like a, Damn, this is time to be mm -hmm. happy. This is, you know what I mean? Like this is time to do whatever. That I felt like, I, I, you know, those, you know, when someone just feels like they want to be heard without having to, no, I get it. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. whereas I think with you, when you were upset or you were having like your moment, I feel like it was very clear. Mm -hmm. Like you, I could, I could either tell or, you know, it was like, it, it was big mm -hmm. and it just, I don't know. It just, it was, it, yeah. I don't know if you know, I don't know if you understand like Yeah, it's probably just more I'm like saying. vocal about it with you, with Delisha. Yeah. Whereas... And I feel like with my stuff, and it's not to even like kind of, I don't know how to describe it. And I was actually thinking about this on the drive here today. Um, like in school, I feel like if I had something going on, it was kind of like, oh yeah, Rebecca's just da, da, da. like, I don't know. I've been watching Harlem. Have you have you watched Harlem? Yeah, I love Harlem. I love Harlem. <laughs> Me too. And I like, relate to Quinn. Harlem. I relate to Quinn. Quinn. Which lady's Quinn? Quinn is the one. You know I'm terrible with names. Quinn is the one that was with the guy, then she was with the girl, then she was with the guy again. And then the fashion designer. She's fashion, a fashion oh, designer. Of course, she loved yeah. the fashion designer. No, though. but like I, I feel like I relate yeah, to all in like different her. ways. Yeah. But definitely Quinn mm -hmm. when she was really sad and like, um, in in that situation, Quinn is the strong friend. Yeah. But sad in the sense of like because her life or her, her parents had money and stuff like that. Mm. Whatever she went through was like. Oh, no, and I feel like not necessarily with um, you guys but with certain people like mm -hmm. if I felt sad about something or I was going through something it didn't matter because my mum got me a new yeah. bag because my mum I remember that being a holiday thing. here because yeah. my mum like because I had obviously very lucky to have a mum that worked extremely hard and still does yeah. to give me anything I wanted like growing up yeah. I feel like it kind of like made whatever I was going through very small mm -hmm. and like it didn't really like matter but then maybe for that reason I was maybe a bit more vocal about it mm. to show like well I am sad or this is what's going on or something like that I remember so. that being quite a big thing um just like the fact that you had the money and I, mm. like I, I really do remember that being a thing where it was like yeah but you've got this like amazing setup like you've got you've got a house and you've got a driveway car and you've got this and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and we'll just be like girl like you've got Thinking back on it, I, I, I definitely, like, get that because I think that was a very big thing for all of us. I think me especially, like, of, of, I don't think we really spoke about a lot of the things that were going on, but I think subliminally I was like, hello, hi. I remember um, we were on the phone mm. when you lived in Abbey Wood. Mm -hmm. or oh, my God, I went past there the other day. I went to that house. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Just for Still the sake there. of it. Still there, Still there man. <laughs> um, but I remember, like, we were on the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever told you, actually, yeah. and... I don't know how these house phones work, but like, maybe you didn't hang up, but I feel like I hanged up mm -hmm. and maybe I was calling you, mm -hmm. but it was like, I could still hear you yeah. and you were talking about me. You weren't saying anything what bad. What did I say? No, you were just like, oh, like, she has like two phones and oh my God. it was something like that. Yeah. And I just remember just thinking like, oh, because maybe to me, I thought it was like so normal. Remember when you gave me your phone? Yeah, and I think and I didn't want to say that story mm. when I was talking about like the things that because it's not about like I gave yeah, Jimmy. It's yeah, never yeah. ever ever yeah. about that. But for me, like that was just nothing. I was like, oh, like I have a spare phone. Like let mm. me just because it's like my friend wanted a phone. You know, I didn't mm. see it as anything crazy. It was mm. just there, 
And how did you feel when you heard that that conversation that I was having? Or who was I talking to? Was I talking to someone, or was it that I was talking I think to myself? Maybe you're talking to like Sadiq or something. Oh, okay. Um, like you're in the house. In the so house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't. I don't know. I didn't feel any kind of way. It was just mm. like, oh, okay. Like I didn't know that that was that she recognized that. I have these yeah, things, but I yeah. didn't recognize. Like I was just living my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you mean? But it was like I guess more eye opening. Mm. Um, but I also didn't, I don't know, like I, because we were so ambitious from such a young age, mm -hmm. I was just, oh, she's going to have like everything she wants anyway. So do you mean, it didn't really phase me. I was just mm. like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Let's talk it? about, I want to move forward a little bit and actually talk about the, us kind of taking the final steps to just end in, because we never really ended the relationship. Mm -hmm. It just was like a, on my end, I think, um, I think your, my birthday was what you said was like your final stop. Mm -hmm. And then mine came maybe like, I was clearly just not alive, but um, on my birthday, obviously you had felt, I don't even know, you explain it to be fair, because it was, it was yeah. how you felt. So I guess to add to context then, mm -hmm. um, so Wimi's very like into, I don't know, he's still into horoscopes on us. Horoscope, not any, not as much as I used to be, you know, Father Lord she God. She was, she was. I was very much a Scorpio babe. Yeah, and she still is, but <laughs> I remember like the day before, like just rushing to Blue Water to like mm. try and get a, um, Birthday present. A birthday present. Do you know what? Even my outfit for your birthday, like the girl had to like drive down from Birmingham mm. to drop it. Drive down from Birmingham. Did you hear that? Because I wanted, because obviously you know how you are. So I was like, okay, like, let me get a cute outfit. It's our birthday. I genuinely wanted to make an effort. And there was mm. basically like a, like St. Laurent perfume. Mm -hmm. And one of, was it like a Libra? I think it was, there was one that was like a Libra. There was another oh, one. And I was like, oh, but the Libra smelled, in my opinion, better. But I was like, because it's not a Scorpio. She won't want she it. She won't want it. Mm -hmm. So it has to be the other perfume. But the other perfume was good because it came with a cute, like, little pouch and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and not that blue was as far, but, like, it was just more, like, the thought behind the the gifts and all of that kind of stuff. And um, then obviously your birthday came. And I, even that day, I remember, like, we were so on time, mm -hmm. like, leaving my house yeah. and everything. And then we get to, like, Welling and there's, like, so much traffic. Yeah. I think we're going to Dami's house and then from there we'll go, go to yours. But the intention was like so good from the start that when I think we were like in like New Cross Old Kent Road, by mm -hmm. the time he had called to ask where we were, and I was just like, we're in, da da da, we're approaching Central. Mm -hmm. And then you were like, I don't, can't remember it like word to word, but basically just like, what the hell, like you guys should have been here, da da da. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh my God, like chill, like we're literally. Because coming. at that point though, it was late. At that point, it was late. So when yeah. I heard you take, so obviously in my head, I'm like, I'm just like, how are you late, da da da, naturally on your birthday, like you're like, what? What's going on? Like, mm. you guys, are, why are you guys not there? Da, da, da. I know how I can get, like, I'm like, where are you guys? Blah, blah, blah. But I feel and like then I when also you... didn't have a chance to, like, explain. Mm. And I think I just thought, like, I think it was, like, all I don't of those like, things. I, don't remember, I, mean. I think on that call, though, from what I remember, but I don't feel like you attempted to explain. It was mm. just, like, we're on our way, though. And I was like, how are you? Like, it's my birthday. Why are mm. you angry at me for being upset about you being late? Do you know what I mean? That's what I took from it. Mm. I definitely wasn't angry for you for being, for being late. It was just, I didn't even have a chance to explain because I felt like you had like already started talking. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, so what am I supposed to like say to it if you're not going to like hear me, if that makes mm -hmm. sense? Um, but I also understand how people are on their birthdays, how we can get that stressed. That was my thing. Or yeah. things like that. Yeah. Like things happen. So I, I got that. But I think by then so many things had happened. So like, many little yeah, small things had been going on. That we, and like, you know, like we never had a conversation about. Yeah. So I remember just saying to Tommy and Dam in the car, like, I'm done. Like, after this, I cannot do But I this. think that was my hearing that, like, after, for me, I had such a massive problem with that. Because I remember you obviously came to birthday and I was hugging you and I was like, why are you hugging me like that? Like, hug me. You remember I said that to you? I was like, hug me properly. Mm -hmm. And you didn't do that. And I was just like, this is, this is just, oh, this is just weird. And I think at that point, I, I also was like, I'm so over this. Like, what is this? And so for you to kind of have made that conclusion and, and still at that point not had a conversation with mm -hmm. me, what was kind of your thought process in that? Did you feel like were you, were you, like, were you just not interested in that? Because before that, we never, there was never a thing. Like, there was never a conversation where it was like, Wumi, I feel like this. Or Rebecca, I feel like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. That you just got to a conclusion where it was like, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm I think when it comes to stuff like that, that is a huge part of it is like how you grow up and the communication that you have in your household and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't feel like I feel like my parents always wanted me to speak, mm -hmm. but I don't think I was ever like heard. If that makes sense. It was yeah. all, like, you can talk to us, you can talk to us, but then I'll say something and it's being completely twisted, yeah. completely this, completely that. Yeah. 
that I just felt like I, I, it wasn't about, oh, I don't feel comfortable speaking to you. It was just more like, this has always happened throughout my life that I just didn't feel like I'd ever be like heard, heard in the situation. Yeah, like you might hear me, mm -hmm. but are you actually like gonna take what I'm saying into account? So that yeah. just felt very, it felt so difficult for me to like express my emotions. And I feel like even now I really struggle to like if I feel kind of way about, well, I don't feel a kind of way about much these days, but if I did, mm -hmm. it would be hard for me to like have that conversation, but I've had to force myself to be uncomfortable with uncomfortable conversations and realize that not everybody's gonna treat you how the other person treated yeah, yeah. you when you spoke. But then it was like, I just didn't know how to have that because I was, it just wasn't something that I was like used to. It was more like if I said how I felt, it was like, oh, but you feel like this because of this. Like, it was just always yeah. some sort of... I think that's the first, that is the first time I feel like I've heard this from you. And I feel like it's quite nice and healing to kind of hear that. Because mm -hmm. I've always wondered, even after we spoke that day at my house, it, back in like early February, I didn't, I still kind of felt, I didn't understand. Because for me, it was like, why wouldn't you just want to have a conversation with me about it? Because I feel like with, us, like with me, I'm just like, just say whatever. And we can find, you know, some sort of resolution. Um, so yeah, thank you for expressing that because I, I can I can understand that. Um, I kind of want to fast track things a little bit and talk about just the end on my end because that was the end on your end, my 24th birthday. And on my end, it was on your story. Like I was like, no, why are you being so... I, like, why are you being such a bitch? Like, what the fuck? I remember going on Instagram that day because at that point I still was like, we haven't had a conversation yet. So in my head, I'm like things are still fine like until we have a conversation, until there's some sort of something. I know we're not close anymore, you know what I mean? But it, surely it's not that deep. And I remember just seeing on your story that you were taking me out of your private story or something like that. After that, I was like, you know what? I feel like I, I've done so much and I just feel weird. And this is just weird, like I'm just so done. And over this relationship and just over the situation and just kind of unfollowing you off socials and just calling it done on my end, which is so out of character for me, especially when it comes to you. I feel like with you, I just, I'm like, I'm always willing to be graceful and just always willing to just be a lot more patient mm -hmm. just because of how far back we go. But I think at that point I had such a switch where I was like, you know what, I would just would not do this to you without saying something to you. I just would never end things, end our relationship without it, there being some sort of conversation. Like, what is it that I've done to you that was so bad that you now needed to take me out? Especially, it, it, it was for me, it was the way it was done where it was, I know you, we've spoken about it and for you it wasn't like intentional. But obviously on my end when seeing it, I'm like, you keep taking me out of your private story and then you publicly said on your public story, oh yeah, all my all the girls who are mm. on my private stories, you know what I mean? I was like, damn, mm. like you must, you must really hate me. And obviously just on following you from that. I want to dive into that just a little bit, just from the lens of like on your end, in that moment of of removing me from your story, were you kind of happy with that decision? That like, yeah, like I am done with this relationship and I am comfortable to be done. Do you know what I mean? Like, was that was that a thought in your head, in your mind? I feel like, again, like the checking out was like way before then mm. and even with that story like mm -hmm. it was not like I removed you from my close friends that day or damn it or... was before that shit I was slow to the party <laughs> I mean I can't remember exactly the specific mm. dates in it but I I just remember like just going through my close friends and just being like I was just trying to make it like smaller and I remember feeling a bit sad like raw like this person does not feel not that, not doesn't feel like my friend but just more like isn't like that close mm -hmm. or as close as we were mm -hmm. um and yeah, I just felt, it just felt sad. It was just like, okay, well, this is just life now, you know? How did you feel during the actual breakup of us just not being friends anymore? How did you feel at that point? Did you have moments where you were like, oh, mm. I miss this friendship. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, what were, what were your going on? What was going on in your mind during that time? I feel like my, um, like I said, my grieving stage was like before. Mm -hmm. like that had all happened. So yeah. by that time, it was like I had already like just kind of checked out. And I think people don't really understand like the dynamics of a like, no, people do understand. A friendship breakup is very difficult to a... Okay. Oh, um, relationship with like a... Yeah, like a boy boyfriend, or something like yeah. that, yeah. Um, because there's so much like, there's just so much, in, especially in our situation where there was so many years of memories and experiences and things that we had like all planned. It was just a lot. So I just felt, um, I felt very sad. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't cry or anything, but it was just more like, there was like an empty sort of like, this is really sad, mm -hmm. um, painful feeling, mm -hmm. anger as well. Not anger like necessarily towards you, mm -hmm. but just more like, 
why did it have to go get to this point sort of thing. Because mm-hmm. um, it really didn't need to. Yeah, it really didn't need to. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like I felt like we wouldn't our friendship wouldn't be the way it was as well. Mm-hmm. Like, we could have a conversation about it, but I didn't mm. think it would get to that point where it was. Do you feel was. like the breakup was necessary? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Definitely. I think um, I... Because I was speaking to Cherish, right? Mm. Cherish is my producer. Hi, girl. <laughs> um, and I was saying to her, like, I feel like last year was a really weird, intense, hard year for me, right? Um, that I experienced this madness of, like, emotions and just madness. And, out, like, coming out of that, this isn't even about you, but coming out of that, I really, when, when we were speaking, I was thinking in my brain, like, I understand you so much more mm. because I feel like one thing, and I'm fast tracking things a little bit here, but it's just coming to mind. But one thing that we both got exposed to a little bit too early on was like what we were capable of attaining mm. in our lives. So obviously for some context, basically there was a period in our life where you explain it because you kind of know about like I'm talking about the past situation and kind of being told oh, right. what we're you know what I mean like what we're yeah. capable of. I'm not gonna say explicitly yeah, don't, what he don't, said, yeah. but like we basically just went. To it was church. a prophecy. It was a, we yeah. had this crazy prophecy. But the thing with the prophecy is like it wasn't when we heard it. It was like oh we were really we were like we knew happen. that so we knew that then you like yeah, whatever because like from literally year seven like we were. You know, Milky Town, we were recording songs, we had our own rated chicks, we, we were doing photo shoots in the park. Yeah, we had like we a yellow... knew who we were after. we knew what we were after. Basically, we were on our game from, from yeah. very young. It was very clear like what yeah. we wanted to do. So hearing anybody say that we we're gonna be successful was just like, Oh yeah, like we already know this. But that is like a different level of like confirmation it was that makes you so like intense on like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that if things don't feel like they're aligning or whatever, you just get so scared. Like mm-hmm. what's happening and what am I supposed to do with my life? And yeah. I remember like one of our friends from school said to me how similar to what you kind of went through in terms of like feeling the way towards me about like knowing what I wanted to do and all yeah. that. She said to me how she, she didn't necessarily feel some kind of way, but she envied the fact that I knew what I wanted to do from a young age, mm-hmm. but I was like, you don't understand like the, how taxing this is that like is, mentally yeah, to know what you want to do yeah. and have all of these obstacles thrown at you yeah. that can make you easy, like switch. And I think know. that's what, and that, I think that's what happened to you earlier on than me. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and that's kind of one of the, re- one of the things that was causing us to shift a little bit. And when we were becoming like different people, mm-hmm. I think you were on it because you got your prophecy like intensely. And I was like 17. You got yours. We're not going to go into the details of it, mm. but Becky's prophecy was intense and it was very early. And I think you be, you instantly try to morph into that that person mm. that you were told that you would become mm. and without actually doing all the various steps that would require for you to become that naturally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that was such a taxing thing for you that it started to make you become this person that I didn't know how to like be around or like be with. Do you know what I mean? Like they're just really intense and only caring about you know, gotta get to the bag. Da, 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 da. Like, I, I knew we've always been about, you know, getting getting our, our work done and being who we wanted to be and fulfilling our vision, our purpose, etc. Mm-hmm. But you became like extremely intense about with it, with it. And so this happened to me. So I think for me, I was like, okay, I don't really know how to like operate with her. This is a bit too much for me. It wasn't even too much for me. I just didn't really know how to operate it because I felt like it was just a, a lot. Mm-hmm. But when it happened to me last year, mm-hmm. my God, like, I can only imagine trying to carry that, mm-hmm. being a 17, 18, 19, do you know what I mean? Like, that young, and when it happened to me at 24, mm-hmm. when we were speaking, I was like, damn. Like, if only I, because I don't think you even understood. I feel like now, you know, with time and like with mm-hmm. better understanding, like you understand how that that would have made you feel then. Mm-hmm. But even, like, I, I, I wish I knew then, like what I know now. Mm-hmm. But do you know what? Mm-hmm. I don't, I, but the thing, you said that, oh, like you feel like we shouldn't have like found those, found out those things young. But then God would clearly say like, this was the right time. But the, anyways, the reason I say this is because when Proverbs told me my one, he yeah. specifically told me the age. I was doing everything before the what age. What was the age that he said? Do you want to... No fucking way. Yes. So oh, I was... This, so now... Oh, it's still a little bit off your Yeah, but like joking, I was joking, doing it from joking. seven years yeah. before that. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell was I thinking was going to happen? Yeah. Like, and I remember just telling myself, like, I'm just going to... And, like, God already told me during this period, this is when this is going to happen. Mm. And I was doing it outside of his period, outside yeah. of his timing. Yeah. What did I think was going to happen? Yeah, facts. And I don't, nec- I don't regret the journey. I feel like I've, you know, for a 25-year-old, I can say I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. That's great. But the it's more the, like, the friction of... 
how things felt. Mm -hmm. Like things felt so hard, mm -hmm. and maybe it just didn't have to be that hard it at that time. It just needed to be enjoyed. Like for me, yeah. It just. I yeah. remember I would always look at you and I would just be like, Becky, please. Like I hated it. I'd be like, it. Becky, please. And literally, like I wish we were in each other's lives. I wish you were. I wish you were there in the chapter twenty four when it was happening to me, mm. because you would have been saying the same thing like, "With me, like chill out, like mm. chill." Every day, like one giraffe, like <laughs> just constantly talking. Oh, I must walk on. Oh, yeah, the vision must come. To, like what? <laughs> like no party and no enjoyment. Just and the thing is, you're just not enjoying. And I feel like more than anything, that that level of intensity and. That that level of just being on it just takes away pull. I feel like it pulls the vision the vision so much more further from you it, than anything. It does because it, like we said at the beginning of this um, conversation, like it now becomes driven by other things besides passion, mm -hmm. whether that's money, whether it's validation, or whatever. And I remember someone that's quite like famous saying to me that you have to really enjoy the the moments Which, that you're in now, like yeah. enjoy the struggle. Enjoy the this person would ride his bike to the recording studio because he had no money. So he would ride a bike for hours to recording studios to go and create music with one of the biggest artists that we know. And he enjoyed that bike ride. Yeah. He didn't allow the fact that he didn't have a car or anything like that to stop him from getting to that studio. Mm. Whereas with me, if I did not have my car, I would have been like, oh my God, I'm not going anywhere. Da, da, da. So like I literally, yeah, I would have felt so upset about yeah. maybe not having enough money or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't enjoy the journey. And he said that when, once you reach that level of success, it's like that thrill, that chase, it's no, it's no longer there because you yeah. already have it. Yeah. So you need to hold on to it and then embrace it whilst it's there because it's gonna go. Yeah. And then you're obviously you're gonna chase for bigger things, but it's very easy for it to, yeah. to just, yeah, slip. Um, you said something when we spoke um, about you wishing, like during your time when, when when we weren't in each other's lives in that way, where you would have moments where you wanted to give up and you knew that it would probably be me. It, it would be like a conversation between you mm -hmm. and I that would shift that and make you not essentially want to give up. And I kind of, I felt the same. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had moments where I would sit on my little dining table in my room, <laughs> in my living room, and I would just be like, this is hard. And I, there's no one really for me to talk to about this because no one understood what it is that I was after in the way that I felt like you did. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like obviously the level of conversation, like even when we had our first conversation after all of this stuff, yeah. and after the the hard conversation, we're talking about like, you know, our goals, or whatever, mm -hmm. it was like, we're like, we need to do it. Like, you know, we were back. <laughs> we were back. We were like, okay, so. <laughs> so it felt, it's just so natural and like easy. And obviously, like, I wish we had recorded everything from when we were like kids mm. um, in school to like, so people can really understand like what we were on because yeah. we were on it we and were, still are. We were crazy. Um, but there's obviously, I feel like in life, there are just people that are like your person and yeah. like soulmates, whether it's romantic or platonic. And it can be hard to like try and, maybe I could speak to someone about 90% of it, but then I could go to you and speak to you about 100% of it. And is that missing like 10%? Yeah. And it was difficult. And I told you as well, like I would have dreams about you like every day. And I was like, God, like, I literally was praying to God. I was like, can you stop giving me dreams about Winnie? <laughs> He's abusing me. I, I was like, I don't even think about her all day. And you put her in my, you put her in my dream. Yeah. And he just kept going and it will like happen for like a month and then it'll stop for like months. Wow. Then it'll happen again for a month and then da 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 da. Um, but in the dream, it was always that we made up like yeah. all every single, there was no dream that was like a different uh, plot. It was just a different location, if anything. But the, Tommy will be there, Delisha will be there. Like it was literally the same thing all the time. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I feel like maybe, I don't feel like I needed that dream though. Maybe because mm. you maybe needed that sort of, I well, don't know. Tommy's dream? Whose dream? No, Your my dream. dream. I said, I don't feel like I needed the dream. Mm. Based off of what I said to you that time when we were in the car and I yeah. said to you, oh, like, we'll be fine. Oh, you, know oh, you felt like I probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I what? think God also knew that I, oh, God changed my pride this year. You but are he... stubborn babe. <laughs> you are he... one stubborn yeah. babe. Yeah. You are one seriously stubborn babe. I think you are at the core of it and that's what made our relationship so healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, when it was healthy, but before <laughs> it became really toxic, um, was that there was always a balance between you and I because I was always like emotion, mm -hmm. all emotions, all in. And you were just kind of like, let me 
chill chill like, just we think don't, about we it don't, we don't have to we don't have to go all the way there you know? <laughs> it might not it might not be that deep and I think yeah. and I feel like well, that's one thing we brought out in each other you kind of gave me that that balance in thinking about things more from like a logic a logical perspective mm -hmm. whereas like I was more like okay but what about the feelings element and I I really cherish that about our mm. relationship and I don't feel like I recognized that until maybe after our breakup when I mm. was just navigating life from a very emotional standpoint. Okay and I feel like as well like there was maybe I feel like I'd always because obviously no new since we're like 11 or 12 yeah I'd always I feel like I knew who you were like very well and yeah I would assume vice versa. Yeah, and there was maybe like certain comments by people, like for example, you saying that just reminded me of um, a situation that you were involved in in college mm -hmm. and you'd called me to tell me like, oh my God, can you believe like this happened? Like this person knows about this, da da da. And I was like, okay, well, like there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. But like my response is very calm and like, let's just move on. I wasn't gonna like entertain it because I didn't want you to like, Fall into that. Waste your time, like, about yeah. this, like, silly sort of drama. Mm. And you were with someone, not to mention names, mm. and she was like, is that your friend? Like, is that her, like, her response to what you're saying? Mm. And it's like, what I was actually saying, in my opinion, yeah, in yeah. my opinion, what I was saying was actually the right thing. Yeah. Because that, I think that's the way you should respond, to be calm and mm. to, like, just not get into, like, all of these things that people want to, you to get into. Because I knew... That's who you not, were, you're, you're and I was just thinking, person. this girl's gonna be like doing all of these amazing things. She doesn't have time for drama versus someone that's trying to like, into, like push you into that. Yeah. And I, I, I genuinely saw that. And I think that's also one reason I kind of like moved away as well because I didn't want to. I think selfishly, I didn't want to like be around that. Not you, like mm. those sort of people. But besides that as well, I was just like, where is she? Like, what's going on? This and I feel like yeah. there was times within before the breakup, but there was times when we had conversations, and you would be like. I'm not happy, man, or like, this just doesn't feel right, or da da da. And I could sense there was like something just, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, I mean, obviously we're now here and, you know, we, we had our first initial conversation and I think this one has been so helpful. I think there's so much. Do you feel like this has been not even better, but like fuller than our first conversation? Yeah, it's definitely for her. Yeah, so yeah. much. And I don't know why that is, but God is God is a one funny man, I see you. Um, but I do want to know just, what do you feel like you've learned from our relationship, especially now that we've reconnected? Like, what do you, how do you want to navigate this new like space that, you know, we're in? Mm -hmm. um, obviously the big one is that like, communication is key. Yeah. And obviously there's like, that was how many years ago. Mm -hmm as well that it's like at my age now yeah like I would communicate yeah. how I feel or if I'm you know and vice versa, versa because at that point like we both didn't say anything to each other um it was all feelings yeah it was just all feelings that no one like spoke about so that's obviously like a key part for us to like continue doing mm. but saying that though although those little things happened I feel like those things happened especially because of the age we were at like it was just they were quite petty if mm. you think about it um, whereas now, like, it wouldn't happen, mm -hmm. but even if it did, we could talk about it. Um, and I feel safe in that relationship to have that conversation. What, now? Should Yeah, now, yeah. should we need to? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't feel like, it doesn't, now, it doesn't feel different. And I don't mean different to like two or three years ago. I mean, it doesn't feel different to when we were like kids yeah. now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably just because of like all of the, the history behind it. But yeah, I think just like clear communication. Yeah. Um, I feel like we talk every day, like yeah. even if it's just like a quick text or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's good. Um, and just enjoying like the really, and I think we have to actively like do things because although we're like, you know, you're doing what you're doing and I'm doing what I'm doing, like we actually have to probably like a relationship yeah, make yeah, some time. Yeah. So, but let's go. Yeah, and, like, and almost you know. like because we have become different people as much as like we are still very much aligned and care about mm -hmm. you know similar things and share similar values but we are definitely like different people so mm -hmm. I think there's a level of relearning you know each other mm -hmm. that needs to kind of occur like even in simple moments like today like watching you and watching you get dressed up I'm like wow we, re we really have become like different people not in a bad way like in, mm -hmm. a, in a beautiful way there's like there's definitely a lot of growth has happened between the times that we haven't been in each other's lives so I'm I'm excited to kind of see <laughs> what this what this new journey is gonna be what this new journey what this new journey is gonna be about so um yeah, yeah is there anything I feel like I've asked quite a few questions is there anything that you want to ask me that you feel like I haven't touched on or anything from the conversation that's kind of like in your mind that you just want to talk about um 
nothing that comes to mind per se. I feel like it was very honest and mm. like it was what it was. Yeah. <laughs> but we move and I feel optimistic about like the future. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel I feel like we're gonna have to work yeah. at it. I definitely feel that. And I and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just I just think that's the reality and I don't think it's like working that's gonna feel, you know, uncomfortable per yeah. se. I just think it's gonna have to be just intentional, like you said, like work and it's just understanding whether or not, you know, both of us are willing to do that work to sustain and build this new relationship. Cause I really do feel like we've become like different people mm. in, in a good way. And I feel like we become who we've kind of nowhere near, well, you know, where we're going, but mm. definitely we become like who we envisioned ourselves to be, where we've done it at, se we've done it separately. Like I feel yeah. like we've had our biggest growth separately mm -hmm. and that's quite big. Yeah. And I feel like there's so much I need to learn about you and who you are now. And there's a lot that you need to learn about me and who I am now. So optimistic too, but I'm just like very, I'm like, okay, yeah, we, we, got, we got some stuff to do. Yeah, it's normal. Okay. Yeah. Give me a little twinkle. <laughs> no, we're not done. Excuse me. We have one more. Oh, okay. Thank you, babe. Okay, before, before we, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, that might be cute. That might be cute. That was, that was quite cute. That was really cute. Okay, before we um, end the conversation, wow, I can't believe we just did that. That was interesting. But before we end the conversation, I have something I want to share with you. So, Mm -hmm. I little find that you like us, yellow. Yeah, <laughs> but do you know what, Bex? You want to name the? No, no, Aziz. it's fine. We're Aziz. Becky be is cute. obsessed with my name. <laughs> my name. We'll get into that another day. But I have this for you. So this is a Bello box. Um, Bello box is a box that I like to give my guest. Mm -hmm. And inside the box is something special for you. Let me even check if it's even in there because <laughs> knowing me, you know me for it. I would just be like, is that home? I bet you go and open it. I want to see if you recognize what's inside. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what we should have spoken about. I know. We can, I mean, listen, show them. And then we can like, we can dive in and see what that's about. It's gonna did you, so where cute. did you get it from? I mean, I got, it from, I got it from the real House of Fraser. I'm not going to lie to you. Like this was not fake House of Fraser. I know. Ruben can have it. Oh, that is so funny. Oh my God. So to give you context on like what the hell is going on for you, like what is going on here? <laughs> you explain this, this is, your, this is for you. Okay, so I don't know which camera is going to see this, but Rated Chicks was our girl group. And she said, what, what do I call myself? We said Becca. Sisters, the funny Becky thing Monroe. is that, that's just Becca though. I have a lot of names, but <laughs> it says Sisters, Becca and Wumi. And we're literally, this is like Primark, Primark. and Willich. We were trying on hills in Primark. You, yeah, you have, I have my pastries on. I have my, do I have my Primark heels on? <laughs> and you I'm have sure your heels it. on and we have fringes and it says Ray to Chicks, which is probably our, our album cover. Uh, who knows? Because yeah. we were doing we loads had a, of things. We had this girl group called Ray to Chicks when we were younger. <laughs> Just her and I, and we were like making songs. You remember the Drake song that we did a remix? Do you I still remember that remember song? It? But it's the other song Baby, that I want to remember. I'm shopping at the mall. You can miss the me shopping at the mall. I will be there. Two minutes flat. I will make sure you're fully glad. <laughs> And then they go like sleep behind. Got, and crazy. Like, I can see. Bro, bro. But there was another one from Easy. Anyways, we'll get onto that another day. But um, and then this shirt that someone is going to love, maybe Reuben. He <laughs> <laughs> is this actually from House of Fraser? No, no, no. I actually got it from um, somewhere else. But, yeah, oh mad. my god. Very, very mad. So basically, there was this like market. Yeah. Outside of Charlton. like behind Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Do you remember the day I called you? Are you like, so, so basically, I so my mum, so <laughs> we used to go to like Saturday market, right? Every Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And there was one that my mum took me to and I got in there. So we were, like I said, we've been hustlers from day one. Day one. We didn't play. You know the girls that are selling the donuts from missing schools to sell the donuts? That was, that us. was us. Harry so Bowes, we're selling confiscated. it. got confiscated. Remember As that in, day? Do you remember the day we came in, like, mad late, and they were like, school is... Took all our bags. Excuse me. Lunch, and we got in so much trouble. But Very anyway, trouble. so with this particular one, I saw the market, and I saw they were selling, like, um, Ralph Lauren polos, Lila Scott. Lyle Scott. Who else? Gucci uh, Just hella, belts. hella polos. Hella fake Hella things. fake polos. And I was, like, I was like, Becky, we've got a new business. <laughs> we can buy this, and we'll sell it for cheap. And we just... Yeah, and we literally went to go buy loads. So many. And sold it. 
And we were trendsetters, because I remember that day in school, we said, everyone must wear a polo, let's be designer. And people came and bought the polos off of us. us. We made so much money. But the funniest thing about it is that we said that, when people were like, where are you guys getting this from? Oh yeah, so we said House of Fraser. And I don't know where we got we House like, of Fraser from. We got it from House of Fraser. Yeah. And people were like, oh, people believed us. House of Fraser have Ralph Lauren. But, no, but, no. but, but would that make sense? Look at the price that we were selling it for. The people were so silly then. That's like, so how, how would that make sense? I think we said something like, there was a discount or something. I don't know what we said, but obviously now we all know it was fake. But yeah. I think even we thought maybe it's real. I think yeah. we had like a we, hope we, we, we were we were visionaries before that before we even knew what that was. But yeah, the X, that was that was a time we have we've had some. But time. yeah, so this top represents our hustling Us. days because we made money. Yeah, man, we made money in school. But Becky, thank you so much for coming today. Honestly, I am so happy at the layers that we managed to kind of dissect. I feel like we needed this. And I think there are definitely so many girls and people in general who want to have these conversations with their loved ones and people who they miss in their life. And, you know, this is, I'm, ha I'm just I'm just really happy we did this and I'm proud mm -hmm. of you and I'm, and I'm still supporting you even when we weren't, you know, friends and looking at the stuff that you were doing and rooting for you, whether it was you working with Cardi B or making amazing pieces and seeing them on social media. Like I, I loved every minute of that, even when we, you know, even when we didn't have that rapport. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to see what the future holds and see us having this con another conversation in like, you know, a few years time and yeah. see where we are. Yeah. Yeah, how are you feeling? <laughs> Good, I'm thank you for us. having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you everybody. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's why I like had this one out. Because you, you were going to wear that. Us. Oh my God. Wait, can we show us? Can we quickly just. Yeah, but we have... but they'll see it. Like, it's literally the same. I don't know. They're standing up. So... We actually yeah. got that. How many? Wow. How many years ago? How many years ago? One thing we didn't mention that I also just love mm -hmm. is the fact that we got our, matching, we got matching tattoos. tattoos when we were. Were we 17? 18. 18. In Portugal. We, went, we went Portugal. We took you Portugal yeah. for your birthday. Your birthday. That was amazing. And that was actually like so fun. That was that. I keep, I always say like that was one of my favorite trips because we were yeah. in a different world. I remember we were so happy we were staying in the same hotel. Yeah. We were like, oh <laughs> my like, god, Gigi. we're gonna be up early. Oh my god, oh thank god. Yeah, you two stay there. We'll stay in this, this room. Have the most amazing time until this day. Like we still, you know, there's some tattoos and things that you do when you're young. And yeah, you that them, you regret. And you're, you're like, like, what the hell is this? But. And that was literally like breakfast that morning. We're like, should we get tattoos? We're like, yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, it says success is ours in Arabic. In Arabic. And when we, I remember when we came back to London, <laughs> and people like, we'll go to Westfield, and they'll be like reading our chest, we're like, like, success is ours. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, it's all of us. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. And it's good that if you do break up, at least it was quite. It's still, do you know what I mean? Like, it's still isolated. <laughs> it's still like, yeah. And I now we can ours. connect it back. No, but... this, I love this. I cherish this so much. I cherish you. <laughs> I love you. Love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>